God bless you all. Amen and welcome to prayer service tonight. Amen and we're so happy to have you uh, online with us tonight. So let's just bow our heads as we get ready to start officially in a word of prayer this evening and we want to ask God's blessings upon us. Amen as we begin. Amen. Praise God. Almighty God, we thank you to be in your presence, Father. We thank you to be found alive in your presence, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord, Father, that you have led us, Lord, by your mighty hand, and we are here tonight by your grace, Lord Jesus. We thank you for each one that is connected with us virtually tonight. We come for prayer. We come to seek your face, Lord. We come to, Lord, to key ourselves into the atmosphere, into the supernatural, Lord, to hear the word of the Lord from you and to release our faith, Lord, Lord, in prayer and supplication unto you, Father, and applying our faith, Lord. Lord, that you would answer, Lord, by your choosing, Lord. You would answer by fire, Lord. You would answer by your word to us tonight. Lord, we long to hear from you tonight, Lord. We come to seek your face once more. And we pray that you would have your way in this prayer service tonight. Bless the word that would be shared with us, Lord. Bless the time of prayer that the saints would have, Lord, uh, in your presence. We pray, O oh God, that you would deliver, Lord. You would heal. Uh, you would uh break uh, boundaries, Father, Lord, that you would bring breakthrough and deliverance, Lord, to those that seek your face tonight. May they be rewarded tonight. Granted, Almighty God, we pray and ask these things in your precious name, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Praise God, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Why don't you just give him some praise tonight? I just want to sing a few songs of uh, worship unto his name and create an atmosphere tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Amen, amen. Let's give him praise tonight. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I say yes, Lord. I say yes to you. Oh, and the 
say, oh, go marching in. Oh, glory when the saints go marching in. Oh, Lord, I want to be in that number. When the saints go marching in. Oh, and when the sun, oh, refuse to shine. Oh, glory when the sun refuse to shine. Oh, I want
Oh, give him glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, I pray we we'll all be ready. I pray we we'll all be ready. I pray we we'll all be ready for his return. a search so that we won't be playing church oh, I pray we'll all be ready for his return oh yeah I pray we'll all be ready oh I pray we'll all be ready yes I pray we'll all at the gate oh yes I pray we'll all be ready for his return Amen. Amen Thank you Brother Anthony Praise the Lord God bless you all Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer Welcome tonight Heavenly Father we thank you for your presence and we thank you for this tremendous opportunity that we in this age of overload of knowledge overload of information we could still find this space of rest, this place where we could come and hide in the cliff of the rock, where we could be covered in your shadow of all, under the shadow of the Almighty, and we could get peace with you and a connection with you and a relation with you. Father God, speak to us tonight. This is an exhortation. And as the people get on in prayer, may the anointing be with them to inspire them and direct them. Granted, God, I commit this session into your hands. In Jesus' name I ask it. Amen and amen. God bless you, and it's a blessing to be here tonight. Now, if you have your Bibles, I'd like you to uh, turn to James chapter 4. We want to read from 7 to 10. James chapter 4, reading from 7 to 10. The title that I have for tonight's exhortation is Submit and Resist. And it comes right out of James chapter 4. Now, remember, I've said it before many years, over the years, we don't throw words to people. If we have to tell you something that you need to know, we will tell you it personally. We don't ever use a pulpit to throw words like we don't know what to say and we're waiting to get the pulpit to beat you in a corner or to say and throw things. We have never been into that. If I have to tell you something, I'll tell it to your face. I'll tell it direct. We don't have to beat around and use the pulpit as a pulpit, a bully pulpit to bully anyone. The pulpit, as far as I see, and this time session is to exhort and to speak on the word. Because the word have life. I don't have life. The word have life. Jesus have life. So when we hear the word, we could draw from the word and get strength. If you are weak tonight, the word could give you strength. If you're low tonight, you're sick tonight, the word could heal you. The word itself is what God released under us to have power. So James 4, and this is what we're about to read as the word, verse 7 said, submit yourselves therefore to God. So I have a one under the submit. Resist the devil and he will flee to you. That word resist, that comes number two. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Draw nigh becomes number three. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts. Ye double-minded, we have a four, and cleanse your hands. Be afflicted, five, and mourn, six, and weep, seven. Let your laughter be turned into mourning, and your joy to heaviness. And we have up to eight, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. So if you're reading in the order that we stated, you have submit, resist, draw nigh, cleanse your hands, be afflicted, mourn, weep, humble yourselves. Now in the Amplified, it says this, be subject to God, resist the devil, stand firm against him and he will flee from you. Come close to God and he will come close to you. Recognize that you are sinners. Get your soiled hands clean. Realize that you have been disloyal, wavering individuals with divided interest. And purify your hearts of your spiritual adultery. As you draw near to God, 
Be deeply penitent and grieve, even weep over your disloyalty. Let your laughter be turned to grief and your mirth to dejection and heartfelt shame for your sins. Humble yourselves, feeling very insignificant, and this humble yourself is feeling very insignificant in the presence of the Lord, and he will exalt you, he will lift you up and make your lives significant. Okay, let's go. A question and answers here. But Abraham, I am saved. I've been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. But how do I get away from a stubborn spirit that I can't seem to break away from? Answer. Well, my Christian brother or sister, whoever it may be, now, most times when you find people that got stubborn spirits, it is usually a complex that causes this. Either they have inherited from father, mother, uncle, aunt, grandmother, grandfather, somebody like that. And if you trace back down to your life, you have taken this by experience under discernment because I have met cases on the platform, thousands of those that had that spirit. And the first thing you know, I will chase that spirit right back by discernment and find that there's a granddaddy or there was a grandmother, there was somebody else back down there and you inherit that by nature. Stubborn, stubbornness is not of God. And now the only way to get away from that is to have, you have to have faith to overcome that. Let me repeat that. Stubbornness is not of God. And now the only way to get away from that you have to have faith to overcome that. You are a Christian. You are a son and daughter of God, whichever you may be, and you will never be able just to stand and rebuke it and rebuke it and rebuke it. It is just like tantalizing a rack of snake. He is laying there ready to bite you. And if you just ignore him and walk away from him, he can't hurt you. So when you feel that you've got a stubborn spirit, lay the thing on the altar and believe God that the thing is dead and you will never have it no more. And go on and don't even pay any attention to it no more. And the thing will leave you. Resist the devil. He will flee from you. That is get away quickly. So that would be my advice, how to overcome it. We overcome the devil by faith. That is what we overcome all, all evil by, is by faith. So I hope that that question and answer would help you tonight and realize they are more depth in the word and more depth by the spirit of discernment that we think of. And this is a good example because Brother Brad himself he dealt with these cases by the thousands and could trace them back and see the effect upon the lives of the people. So sometimes you may be in stuff or whatever, and it's something that is dear, but you have to know to lay things down. You have to know to walk away from stuff. If you haven't listened to the message from Wednesday night, I want to encourage you to do so, the high priest of your confession. Because the prophet clearly states, you cannot live about, above your confession. So if you're talking negative, talking instead of foolishness about your own self, you can't get very far. If you say, hello, I don't, I ain't going good or whatnot, you're talking in devil's language. You have to begin to apply and get stronger. You have to begin to apply your faith and get muscles. You have to begin to do that because God wants us to exercise our faith that we could be built up. God don't want it with baby feet. You know, it come like um, a parent was saying, you know, the child, in a lower form, form one or, or standard one, um, will make small sentences. But as they get older, you don't want them to make those baby sentences. They have to begin to grow to make more complex sentences. And they have to get the help necessary. They have to get the books to read. They have to get the understanding that you cannot make, come John, come, and, and you know, here goes Jane and whatnot. That could work in standard one. But standard four and standard five, those baby sentences can no longer work. 
So you have to be able to expand. So the, the Christian experience is what we had in the early years. We have to be stronger now. And the only way it could be done is if we get into the practice, into the exercise, into the push-ups, into the lifting the bar, which have to be stronger than you, to put some pressure on your muscles. That's the only way. In other words, pressure and stress is help, help us to exercise our faith. What is happening, people are not exercising their faith. They're letting, you know, the pressure just take them and crush on it. So I trust them that is with happy tonight. I want to encourage you to listen back to that message from Wednesday night. Okay, let's continue. Brother Brown, you can't have life only through Christ. So you can't go in there. You can't have life only through Christ. But now, what does his word do? Here we go. It builds up our spiritual body. Strong as we commune with him to resist the devil. So what is he saying here? We have to actually learn and become strong in order to resist the devil. Now, I like how the words were phrased in the scripture. The first thing the Bible exhort is to submit yourself. What is this going to mean? Okay. Hear what it says here. First thing, submit yourself therefore to God. And then it said, resist the devil. Because if you want to resist the devil, I mean, I'll read the scripture for you. Some guys trying to cast out devils and do their own stuff and they're not submitted to God. We call them jokers and the devil jump on them. So you cannot try to pulverize the devil, overcome the devil and do whatever you think with that devil and you're not in submission to God. So the first thing is to ask yourself, am I submitted? Do you know what submission is? Because you have to be able to submit yourself and humble yourself. All right, let's continue. So Brother Branham says here now, yes, he's the word. Communion. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. Then his body is his word because he's the word. And if you abide in me and my communion, my word abides in you. So in other words, your connection with the word gives you the strength to build up a strong spiritual body. You see how you take tablets, zinc and magnesium and, and, and one a day and, and iron and, and whatever we take. We're taking those things to help our body, our natural body, our physical body, especially as we get older, we want to know that we you know, have all the right nutrients and stuff. Well, same, similarly, in the spiritual realm, we have to have the nutrients that give us the strength to stand in this hour. So you say we are taught, Brother Branham, to resist the devil, he will flee from us. Now, to resist is just simply to turn him down. Just resist him. Just walk away from it. God said a certain thing. No matter what he's trying to tell you, don't even listen to him. You have cars that you are ears that are deaf to anything else but what the Spirit says. Amen? So praise God. So listen. To submit means to yield. To surrender something for consideration, authority, or judgment. So depending, depending upon what it is, you get a different context of submission. So to authority, willing to yield to authority of another. So present something which is to submit, is to submit like a presentation for approval or submit a document for approval, right? So therefore, in submit means to acknowledge the superiority or decision of another. That is what is to submit. To submit is also to surrender one life to divine power, God's power, to divine authority. Now, to resist means to oppose, to withstand, to strive against something. It, it means pushing back against a, like a force, pushing back against influence, pushing back against temptation. If you are not pushing back, you're not resisting. I repeat, if you are not pushing back, you are not resisting. If you are not pushing back on influences, whether family, worldly, friends, workers, whatever it is, you are not resisting. You're just plain sly. You're just going with the crowd. You don't want to hurt nobody. You don't want to offend nobody. It come like if the, uh, the office says, uh, you're having a small drink and you're not resisting and say, I'm a Christian, I don't drink. If you say that, all right, they know you have a clear stand. If you say nothing, they will pass you a glass and you may just sip it, you know, and whatnot. You're not resisting. So again, like submit, that have context. So, so to fight against something physically or mentally, 
to fight against temptation or influences, to fight against uh, authority or rules, that is resistant. To withstand something that is harmful, that is resistance. But uh, And this is a scripture I have here. And this is where they were trying to get stuff without submission, these guys. And this is from Acts 19, 11 to 17, we're going to read. Not much time. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul, so that his body were brought into the, into the sick uh, into the sick handkerchiefs or aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits in the name of the Lord Jesus. So they want power, they want influence, they want show, they want to play themselves. So they had they started to call on evil spirits in the name of the Lord Jesus, I say, saying, We are journey by Jesus, whom Paul preaches. They're not preaching again. Is what Paul preaches. They want to work something there. And there were seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew, and chief of the priests, which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. But who are ye? And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them, overcame them, and prevailed against them. So they fled out of that house naked and wounded. So the spirit gave them a good licking. The spirit they're trying to cast out, jump on them and handle them. And the first 17 says, and this was known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling at Ephesus and fear fell on them all. And the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. Oh, let's continue. Almost done. Hebrews 13, 17 says, Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves. There are so many Christians and so many people don't want to submit themselves. They don't want to submit themselves to order, to church order. They don't want to submit themselves to the pulpit, to the ministry. They're running their own show. They are private operators with their own revelations and so on. They will get burned. You, you will get burned, not they. You inside of here who want to operate like that, you'll get burned because the ministry is not to pose. God didn't put a minister or a pastor there as just like a decoration or like a picture on a wall. He put him there as a watchman to watch over your souls and the Bible will speak that. Listen to this. Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves. Not just to obey, but to submit. For they watch for your souls as they that must give account that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is unprofitable for you. So in other words, when God is to call the ministry to give account of you, trust is a good one. It's a good report. Let's read that in the Amplified. Obey your spiritual leaders and submit to them. And this is what they have in the Amplified. Continually recognizing their authority over you. You see, this year, this is problematic. There are so many Christians don't want to recognize authority, authority over them. And I can read for you where the Bible exhort us to submit to the authorities, natural authorities, judges, magistrates. You can't watch a red light and says, I am feeling led to stop at no red light. Who put that red light? They is man put that red light and I obey man. And yeah, you break the red light and you get in an accident, you get a ticket charge, you might even kill somebody in a car accident or whatnot because of your foolishness. But the Bible said to submit. Why? There are rules and orders to protect Christians. That's what judges are there for. Until Rome make the move, until the press come down, until all the dramas had to take place, that'd be a different thing. Then we have to resist. But as for now, what the Bible put over us is to submit ourselves even to the authorities. So obey your spiritual leaders, submit to them, continually recognizing the authority over you. This applies to wives too. Wives who bulleted and don't want to listen to their husband and figure out well, they're running their own show or whatnot. God is asking you no question, you know. God go ask the man or the husband the questions. So he has to know what he will give an answer over on a bullhead or a, a wife who don't want to submit or take the husband leadership. And you husbands, you have to know where you're taking your wives. 
So if you're not a leader or you don't get empowerment to lead, what are you leading them on to? All right, so I don't mean to go all this tonight, but just going about authority. So recognizing the authority over you, for they are constantly keeping watch over your souls and guarding your spiritual welfare as men who will have to render an account of their trust. Do your part. Let them do this with gladness and not with sighing and groaning, for that would not be proper for you. You ask somebody that question about this person, oh God, you're grown because you report not so good. Titus 3 1 says, put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey in magistrates and to be ready for every good work. And the last scripture I have here, wow, it's almost done. Last scripture, big scripture, it says this here now. 1 Peter 5 5. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. See the spirit quality? Not a young person carrying on and they respect no senior person. That is, that is not right. Ye, all of you, be subject one to another, be clothed with humility, for God, or oh God has resisted, you know, he has resisted the proud and give grace to the humble. So God has actually pushed back the proud. You proud, he will fight you. He will push you back. He will disappoint you. He will shame you because of your pride. I wish I could hear some amens. I can't hear no amens. I can't hear anything here. Is there one traffic or one way thing here tonight? God has resist the proud and give grace to the humble. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. And this, in the Amplified, this is the last quote we have here. Likewise, you who are younger and of lesser rank, be subject to the elders. You see this? So when you want to compete, or there are competitors who figure you're at the same level and whatnot, you're deceiving your own self. That is the level of self-deception. God have rank and God have order and structure. He doesn't have the moon feeling led to be the brightest thing in, in, in the sky. The sun will star in the day. The moon has to star in the night. God have things set up that way. And we can't change that. So he said, likewise, you are younger and of lesser rank. Be subject to the elders, the ministers, the spiritual guides of the church, giving them due respect and yielding to the council. Clothe or apron yourselves, all of you, with humility as the garb of a servant, so that its covering cannot possibly be stripped from you with freedom from pride. Oh, I feel good about that tonight. With freedom from pride and arrogance towards one another. For God sets himself against the proud, the insolent, the overbearing, the disdainful, the presumptuous, the boastful. He opposes, frustrates, and defeats them, but gives grace and favor to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves, demote, lower yourselves in your own estimation under the mighty hand of God, that in due time he may exalt you. So God calls us to submit and to resist. You will be a weak Christian and stay a weak Christian if you find yourself devil beating you up. There is no resisting power and it's because you're not really submitting. You are saying pray for me, but you are not willing to submit yourself. What you need is an inoculation of the Holy Ghost. When the nurse comes with a needle or the doctor comes with a needle or the pastor comes with a needle, you fly out of the room because the needle gets you frightened. But what a needle has is an inoculation against sin and to strengthen whatever white corpuscles or whatever blood cells to fight the disease. That is what that is for. So the Holy Ghost or the baptism of the Holy Ghost is supposed to be an inoculation that gives you a greater sense of resistance against the enemy. Now, we all born in sin and iniquity. We are finished to begin with. We don't stand a chance. But God, rich in mercy, Give us this opportunity to say by Christ I'm healed, that we say I'm strong, to be empowered, to be effectively empowered. You have to clear grounds. You cannot say I am weak. You cannot say I'm struggling. What is that? What is that? If people in Ukraine under bombs, and right now I hear over a million people have no current, that you will have trained that. Because Russia pulls some missiles on them and, and blow up the whole the, the electricity thing, and, and they, they have no current. And right now it's been to time across the airbreaks. Just in case you don't know, it's winter time. You know. We have rain, a rainfall, and people ball like one drunk. 
But they have winter time across it. Real cold. So what I'm saying then, in the world today, from another perspective, people see great horrors. We don't have that. We have lethargy, laziness, laudicia, have need of nothing, proud and all of that. And God trying to knock that off in order you could access him. Draw nigh unto me. I will draw nigh unto you. Resist the devil. And he not going to walk away. He will flee. Flee is the bolt. But if he not getting no resistance, he figure he could come nearer. He could figure he could, he could, he could give him a cup of coffee and all. If he asks him to make one. Because you're not resisting him. You are encouraging him. Just now it's, it's coffee and cake. So, 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 so you have to show God that you mean business. You have to show God that you really want this reality. You not want to say, God, help me now, God. Help me. You can't pray because you're lazy. You can't pray because you don't want to repent. You can't pray because you're proud. It takes humility to say, I need help. I want to repeat that. It, say, it takes humility to say, I'm sorry. It takes humility to say, help me. It takes humility to say, I really don't know what I'm supposed to do. Would you pray that God send, gets his mind that I could know? It takes it takes humility to admit that you're wrong and you're off. People don't talk that. They like to talk mountain, talk, talk. Uh, on top of the mountain, uh, to, to bless, to be stressed. And all the catchphrases and whatnot. And that is irrelevant into the kingdom of the devil who can date. They're laughing at all of that. Because you're stressed. You're stressed because you're not submitting. You're stressed because you're not overcoming. But I'm saying overcoming keeps life in you. And I'm not no, no big set of drama, you know. You have to overcome in little things. The big things coming to overcome. But you have to start somewhere. Start on you. Stop criticizing others. Stop trying to pull down others. Stop blaming others. And begin to deal with you. Look in the mirror of the word and ask yourself, am I saying the right thing? To my husband, to my children, to the worker, to my neighbor, to brethren. Am I being negative? There are some people a negative base. So they will always see half empty. An next person positive base, say the glass half full. And you'll always get that coming out of their lips. Out of the mouth. What are you saying? What are you telling yourself? What are you asking yourself? You're trying to hurt you or trying to help you? You're trying to bring you down or trying to pull you up? You're trying to beat you or you're trying to take authority over you? What is our objective? What is our motive? What is my motive tonight of sharing these things with you? Submit and resist. Resist the devil, he shall flee. If he flee, it might he may come back, you know, but he flee, he might take off like a bullet. He, he got space. But some of you not resisting. You need to submit. You need to surrender. You need to put up your hand and say, I surrender. You see, when you're under war and pressure and you put up the white flag, it means you give up. You have to put up the white flag and say, Lord, I commit my life into your hands. I give up. I try. I fail. I fail miserably. But no, I'm surrendering to you. Lead me and guide me. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, I thank you tonight. God, for this word, your word is real. You say, cleanse your hands. You said, submit yourself. You said, resist the death. You said, cry. You said, weep. Mourn. Humble yourself. God, may this be us tonight. Nobody else. In our room, in all this space, we want to apply this word to our hearts and, and may it come out right. We want to admit how much we need you. We need your leadership. We need your guidance. We need humble hearts, Lord. Strip us of ourselves. I commit this time of prayer into your hands. May the anointing fill the homes of your people. May the anointing fill their minds and their lives. God, I shared with them concerning stubbornness and certain traits that we have. And Brother Abraham, he said, you can't rebuke it, rebuke it, rebuke it. It's not going to work that way. So some, some of this stuff that we have to deal with takes a different approach. Help us, Lord, to have that mindset that we adjust our thinking and submit what has been revealed in this last day as to how to deal with our own individual cases. Bless them, open up to their minds, give them revelation, vision, inspiration, that this word is true, this word is real, and this word of power. Granted, God, in Jesus, I ask it. Heal the sick in our midst, strengthen the feeble knees, those that need to speak right, inspire them tonight in their prayer, that they will say the right thing. Don't talk about their weak, don't talk about their struggles, but say, Lord, you're going to provide, you're going to make a way, I'm going to be strengthened. I'm going to exercise my faith. May it begin tonight to the hearts and lives of your people. In Jesus' name I ask it. Amen and amen. So God bless you, saints. I trust them that these few words would be an encouragement to you. 
and that it will inspire you as they get down in prayer that God will truly speak to your heart. So God bless you as we get down in prayer. Praise the Lord.
blessed be the name of the Lord. Father, we praise you tonight. Father, we thank you tonight. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace that you would speak true to us, Lord. You're not a man that would lie. You would speak to us the things we need to hear, or we need to clean up, or we need to draw near, or we need to submit, or we need to resist, or we need to press the battle, Father, not just to lay back and be at ease in Zion, Lord, waiting for the rapture. Lord, it's not going to happen that way. There's a message of preparation, a message to prepare us for war, to battle and to fight. And all the tools that you're releasing, every prayer meeting, every service you're releasing, tools, you're releasing keys for those of our ear to hear. Oh God, anoint our hearts to hear, to hear direct from you, Lord, and to receive your word and to receive your truth, Father. Oh God, may the word become flesh. May the word come alive. May the word be real. They struggle, Lord, in the, in the, in the Old Testament. They struggle in the New Testament. They, it was a battle of faith, the fight of faith. And Paul said it, he fought a good fight. It's a fight, a fight against the five senses, against the flesh, senses of the flesh, the senses of the spirit, a fight, a battle every single day. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against, against principalities and powers. Father God, look at those who are sick. You know, let's look at those who need a touch from you. The heaven dropped down, Father. We see it. We see it through the prophet. He saw hell on the earth and heaven came down when those angels came down to bring all the seven seals, to release the anointing, to release the power, to receive the blessing of God upon the people. And it was released in word form. It was released on books and tapes. It was released in the form of promises. And now these promises are about to come alive. These promises are about to be manifest. These promises are about to be made real. Help us, Lord, that we wouldn't give up. We wouldn't let go. We wouldn't turn back. Like when the children came to Kanish Baniya, Father, and it was in a terrible condition and negativity, and we cannot take it, and we cannot go forward. And all those spies brought a negative report. Oh, Jesus, Lord, we have heard, we, we don't want to hear no negative report. We want to get a true report that God is good. He is faithful. He is loyal to his word. He honor his word. He will look over his word to perform it. Oh, Father, bless tonight. Bless the people tonight. Thank you for this time of prayer. Thank you in advance for what you're about to do this coming Sunday, the morning service and the communion service, the evening service. Father, may your fire fall. May your power take a hold upon your people. Remember the mothers, Lord. Remember the children in our midst, the young people, Father. Minister to them and meet their every need. Remember the fathers, the wives, the husbands. Oh, God, minister to them and meet their every need. Remember the elderly, the seniors among us, those that need a touch and the body from the crown of the head to the sole of their feet. Father, minister to them, Father. Meet every need in our midst. I commit their lives into their hands. Those that are backslidden, Lord, may they restore. Those that are out of favor with you, may they come back into favor with you, with their heart getting right with you. Granted, God, in Jesus' name I ask it. Amen and amen. God bless you, saints. Thanks again for being here tonight. It was a tremendous blessing to be here and to be with you. God be with you until we see you on Sunday. Have a blessed night. God bless.